Well, Dalton, I'm so glad to finally be here with you in Erbil, northern Iraq, Iraqi Kurdistan. For months we've been talking about it. You made it happen. Now we're here. This place is near and dear to your heart. Tell us why you are so connected to Iraqi Kurdistan. Well, for us, the personal journey started in Turkey, actually. We moved to Turkey back in when we started FAI, which is our little spiritual family. Frontier Alliance International, great organization that we featured here before on the show. Yeah, in fact, in, uh, in Israel, in the Golan, when we were working That's in right. Syria. And uh, we moved to Turkey because the Syrian war had started. And we moved into a neighborhood accidentally that was a Kurdish neighborhood. We started hearing the Kurdish story, the Kurdish narrative, hearing the hearts and the minds of Kurds, and we instantly fell in love with them. And just so people know, the work you're doing at FAI, you're going into war zones, into hot spots, and you're providing incredible humanitarian work. Yeah, we believe very much in creative access and that to tether together relief and humanitarian aid with the faithful representation of the gospel, to Amen. be both hands and feet and the message of the gospel itself, to display it among the nations. And the main emphasis for us really is this is how we're blessing Israel and standing with Israel because yeah. by engaging Israel's enemies with mercy, we're actually, as Paul said, we're actually blessing and standing with Israel. So this is our way of showing solidarity to Israel is engaging Israel's enemies with the message of Israel's Messiah. The good news is that the Kurds are not an enemy of Israel. We'll talk about that yeah. in a bit. But you formed this connection with the Kurdish people through your work and all of a sudden you and your family end up here in Iraqi Kurdistan. How did that all play out? Well, we watched, uh, as Obama called them, the JV jihadis take Fallujah. ISIS, of and course. And we watched Fallujah fall, and as soon as Fallujah fell, which is a place that there was a lot of blood and uh, money, and there was a lot spent there to, to secure Fallujah during the surge years and the Anbar years. U.S. soldiers. When that fell, we knew that something significant was about to happen. They weren't no JV squad. Yeah. So we recalibrated, and because we were prioritizing Syria and Turkey at the time, and then we came here when Mosul fell. And we jumped in with the Kurdish forces providing medical care, emergency medical care for the Peshmerga. Now the Peshmerga, the Kurdish yeah. military forces, and we jumped in with them, moved into, we moved to the Iranian border, right on the Iranian border where we'll be going the next few days. Yeah. And uh, we, be, they accepted us as family and we just became home. So I've got, my wife and I have four boys and uh, for a number of years during the ISIS years, we lived here and uh, Kurdistan became home to us. Yeah. When we came here, we realized that the Kurdish forces were really the key to all of these territories because they hold the keys, they're the security forces. Yeah. And so we realized that the best way to actually engage the civilian population on the Turkish, Iranian, Syrian, Iraqi border was to coordinate and work with the Peshmerga forces. Yeah. And we discovered in the process that the Kurdish military forces are aggressively pro-United States, aggressively pro-Israel, aggressively pro-religious liberty, aggressively pro-ethnic freedom, meaning they don't, they're, they're not a, a racist genocidal army yeah. like many of the armies in the Middle East. And this is here in the middle of the Muslim Middle East. We have this great force for moderation right here in Iraqi Kurdistan. Pretty amazing. And the thing is, Kurdistan, a lot of people don't, you say Kurdistan, they go, where, I can't find it on the map. Yeah. Where is it, you know? Uh, and the reason why is because Kurdistan, the best way that I know how to explain Kurdistan, what it is, is it's a pre-state inside of a failed state, Iraq. Iraq, surrounded by rogue jihadi states. We're going to talk more about the geopolitical strategic situation here and why the Kurds are such an invaluable ally for the United States right here in the heart of the Middle East. But we have to mention where we are right now. Yeah. This is a fascinating place. Set the scene for us. So right now we're in the old city, the citadel, right in the heart of Erbil. Now the crazy thing about this place is, as you can see, it, it looks pretty old. Oh, and it just, is pretty old. It's not just pretty old. This is the oldest inhabitable city in the world. 
meaning there's no other city that, that some come close like Damascus, but there's no other city in the world yeah. that there's a record of a population living inside of this city longer than this one right here that we're walking in right here. So some 7,000 to 8,000 years old by some accounts, yeah. people were living right here. Yeah. And again, folks, this is Erbil. This is the capital uh, of Iraqi Kurdistan, but it's an amazing place. And you see the visuals there of the overlook here uh, from the Citadel. Uh, and this has become a real tourist hotspot. We see Kurds everywhere taking selfies. Pretty cool to see. The crazy thing about her bill, this is what's crazy. People go, oh, and you probably heard this when you were getting on a plane to come here saying, oh, you're going to Iraq, it's yes. so dangerous. Erbil, this is one of the top five safest cities in the world. Wait, please repeat that for us. Erbil, so we're walking right now, which is yeah. in Iraq, technically. Yeah is classified in terms of statistically one of the five most safest cities in the world in terms of statistics. Wow. Which is mind blowing when you think yeah. the, neighborhood the neighborhood that we're in. But I can attest to it. Living here, you know, raising kids here, this is, uh, you know, think about it. A US service member or even an Israeli service member could walk the streets of this place and people will come out of the shops, shake your hand and say thank you. Yes. They'll hug you, they'll kiss you. They love the United States, they love Israel. Yeah. It's a Muslim country. The U.S.-Kurdish relationship, the cooperation against ISIS, and we're gonna talk about that more coming up, but the cooperation against ISIS, against Saddam Hussein, take it back about 25 years. Yeah. The Kurds have been a steadfast and loyal ally of the United States for many, many years. Yeah, this is the bottom line. Kurdistan is the Iraq that we dreamed of in 2003. Wow. When we deposed Saddam Hussein, we had this envision yeah. of religious liberty that was all of these things. Yeah. You go down and you look at Iraq today. Iraq is none of those things. Iraq today is Iran. Yeah. Kurdistan is everything that we fought and bled and died and believed in 2003. Yeah, take us through the history of this proud people a little bit that goes back thousands of years here in the region and that also has a biblical connection. Profound biblical connection. And you know, the question is where do you start? There's so much, but yeah. you know, let's, let's take uh, Assyrian and Babylonian invasion. You know, the, the Jewish people are, uh, their lands invaded and violated and they're deported. Where are they deported to? Here. Here. So the, the indigenous people of this land became the custodians in many ways of Jewish presence in their midst. And you can meet Kurds today who will talk about before 1948, how there was still Jewish presence here and how they believe it was their responsibility to care for the Jews who were still in exile in their midst, who then went back in 1948. Now think of that, what other country in the Middle East thinks and talks that way? Yeah, who's actually reminisce, has fond reminiscences of the Jewish presence here and would like to see it return. And I think it's because God's hand is on this people in a profound way. Uh, you know, th this, is, this is profound. You know, we talk about the wise men who came, you know, to, when Jesus was born in Bethlehem. But where did the wise men come from? They came from here. And if you talk to the Kurds today, the Kurds just assume it. It's just, yeah, the wise men, they were Kurds. So think about this, potentially the first people to acknowledge the divinity of baby Jesus in Bethlehem who traveled to the land of Israel were more than likely were Kurds. Now go to Pentecost, Acts 2. There's a list in Acts 2, it says that all of these peoples gathered in Jerusalem for the Feast of Pentecost. Mm -hmm. They gathered there and who's the first people mentioned but the, the biblical term for the Kurds. So the Kurds are the first people to recognize the divinity of baby Jesus, and they're also the first people mentioned in the book of Acts who were present at a Jewish feast in Jerusalem on Pentecost after Jesus was, was crucified and rose from the dead. And I think the Kurds have a history and a destiny of being at the forefront of God's purposes. And I think that's what we're at the, on the cusp of now is another season of the Kurds being harbingers of God's providential purposes in the Middle East. Yeah, there's clearly something stirring here and it's a proud people that, look, has been oppressed. They can share that with the Jewish people as well. There's been a history of uh, oppression and tyranny against the Kurdish people here in the region. Yeah. But like Israel in many ways, the Kurdish people are standing strong. Yeah. They're here today, they're thriving through Saddam, through ISIS, through go back to ancient oppressors thousands of years ago, yeah. yet the Kurds are still here. And I think it tells you something, Dalton, about the character and the spirit of the people yeah. that they are so close uh, to America, that they do have such a fond view of Israel. 
Interestingly, the Arabs call the Kurds the other Jews and they call Kurdistan the other Israel. Now they mean it in a derogatory way, but for us we consider that a compliment, I would say. Totally. And now the thing is, those of us who stand with and love the state of Israel and the Jewish people, I believe there's no better way over the next decade to show our love and solidarity with the Jewish people in the state of Israel than standing with this people and this pre-state that's not yet a state that I believe deserves to be a state. Yeah. And you can see it, it's coming alive. And this is a place that deserves our support. We talk a lot here on the show about Israel being the front line of defense for the West, but the Kurdish people are the front lines of that front line yeah. here in the belly of the beast in the Middle East. But hey, we're gonna be talking a lot about what's going on here today. And as people can see, it's bustling, it's alive here in Iraqi Kurdistan. We'll talk more about the past and we'll talk about the future of this incredible people and this incredible region with you. Dalton, thank you so much, my friend. I'm glad you're much here, more. brother. Oh, I'm glad. It wouldn't have happened without you, my friend, and the great work of Frontier Alliance International. We'll have much more coming up from here in Erbil after the break. Don't move. <laughs>